so yeah, I was gonna have like a background, right? Because mm -hmm. I figured black was just nothingness was kind of boring. So I put. I in mean, just just, on, just screen share the, the the. You should just screen share the call. I that is a good idea. Um, yeah, I do have a wait. Hold on, live on stream. Can, we'll do it you live. Can pop the, uh, you you just, want, like uh, click into the call and then pop it out and then window capture that. Yeah. Because now you in actual channel, so you can have it up. Uh, also, let me know next week, because I can set you up with, like, audio splitters. That would be appreciated. <laughs> I kind yeah. of put this together 30 I, minutes ago. <laughs> not that I needed. Dude, I used to actually run the PVC broadcast with none of that. Oh, God. That's that sounds I, I, Yeah, no, I had all the audio coming out of the same source, so I would have to deafen during breaks and then manually type, like, 10. Nine, eight. <laughs> when we were coming off countdown, and I, I had the thought to ask everyone to record their oh own audio God. so we could just splice together in like for a YouTube That's upload. Scuffed. But I thought that that would be a lot for now. Just having person. just just like a virtual. I just use a virtual audio cable. Like it's it's really easy. I I just have it running through. Like what you do is like you get multiple virtual audio cables, and then you have each. Thing on program on your computer running to that, and then you just have it preview back to your own headphones. So like, I actually have like Paladins goes to a, an audio source that nothing else goes to, and then it just runs all the way back around to mine. That's okay. that's how you do that. It's it's not it's not that hard to do. We have. I'm making a camera with my PPC it. money when it comes in for this broadcast. <laughs> nice. Okay, it's only mildly okay. scuffed now, so it's like present free icons, but. <laughs> 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 Take we'll, it. He's we'll bringing call it, all Christmas. We'll call I don't it mind, good listen, not a not a could totally just be on the floor. I mean, that's his that's his thing right now, right? Like we could I'm just have on the, floor, on the floor. Yes. I don't yes. think anyone would really mind unless there's like a complete mess in the background. Maybe Colka uh, will Colka will guess star randomly if you do that. <laughs> all right. So, um, we're gonna go over we're gonna go over new patch and. PWC thingamajiggies now. I haven't done this sort of thing before, so Nada, I'm, so, re I'm relying on you to... Uh... Alrighty, so I think first off, since we're doing this sort of as a uh, an introduction to the competitive scene for people who may yeah. be unfamiliar, uh, we should just do, go through some introductions. True. So starting on the top left, Crows. Somehow, I guess it's just because I'm cursed because of my webcam. But for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Kresnik. I've been playing Paladins uh, competitively, and then and then more casually, I guess, as I had to take a backseat for for commentating since about mid 2017. I I commentate the pro circuit as I'm as I'm sure most of you probably probably able. Those of you who don't, that's what I've been doing for a little while. Hopefully, we'll be continuing that later down the line. Well, I am Fishnet. If you're here, you probably know who I am. But I was a pro player in PPC Split One. Been playing the game competitively for four years. Um, running for AOC right now, and yeah, it's like playing the thing. I got the fancy title from Split Split One by playing support for HP Office Chat. That is pro cool. six nine seven eight wireless all in one instant, instant ready printer. printer. Well, yes, sir. Never forget yeah. that. But alrighty. Um, well, I am. Um... Nada. I, I played in, I've dabbled in the tier 3 competitive scene a little bit. Um, I currently work on uh, Paladin Central, which hosts the Paladin Central Minor League. Um, which will be continuing next year, hopefully, as soon as we get uh, get some news about where Paladin's Esports is. But we will be looking to host in uh, in some form. And uh yeah. I need like an intro song or something. What's your uh, what's your, what's I, your I, I could play song something. Thing? I think yeah, my what? song would be like some like the baby type beat. I just come in like hard as fuck, but like low key I'm actually just relaxed in like voice. Wait. That'd be really funny. What I'm hearing is Beethoven seventh. I hold, that hold up. Would I, actually I, I, be okay. I, 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 wait, 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 I what about out. wait is that what is the song that used to play oh my I might be too old for this for all of you now that I'm saying this, but when you used to call someone and they had a ring back tone but they deleted the ring back tone. So it played like that default yeah, you're the old one. You, you lost me on that one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, used to, you used to be able to like pay money to have 
shitty mid mp3s of songs play when you called someone so instead of oh, you know hearing a ringtone it'd be like yeah. please enjoy the music while your party is reached and then it would play whatever like my humps Definitely. or whatever, <laughs> whatever <they want. laughs> um sorry play... i'm eating some food right now i can lie beethoven seventh yeah yeah so i am penguin i am a pro player from split one and two of the ppc i also won the world championship with the god squad snapping Pog, Pogu. I give my opinions on the meta way too much. I complain too much about the game. Here we are. I'm Penguin. Alrighty. Very cool. So that is us. <laughs> we are people. We talk. We uh. We're we're, we're we do paladins and we talk about we're it. Paladins. And we decided we talk about paladins a lot. Why not? talk about paladins in a place where other people can hear us talk about paladins. I mean, there's definitely been a, a paladins podcast sized hole left. Yes. Ever since Ever the death of uh, everyone's Chain favorite everyone's favorite podcast. <laughs> I I can't believe we got I got Strixis and <laughs> I, I can't believe I got I got Strixis and, and Adonis on and then that was the last thing we ever did. And it was our legacy was having the like devs on the game and then having Spunky losing his shit laughing at Stormtroopy vomiting all over himself live on <laughs> That's a that's a great clip. That's still an amazing clip. That clip was uh funny. Were you watching live when that happened? When I accidentally played that at like quadruple volume to everybody else? I, I, I was watched like, oh. a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> when I thought Chad couldn't hear it, and then it turns out it was the only thing Chad could hear. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, I think the first thing we're gonna go through is the um, the patch notes for the upcoming update of Paladins. We're just gonna cover Penguin up with the patch notes on stream. I think this is. That's okay. Yeah, go ahead. 100% do that. There we go. There goes Penguin. So, do we look at Battle Pass or do we go straight to Balance? Well, I think I mean, the, the skins are the, the skins are sick. They're the, always sick. The skins are cool. They gave Genos a, a close iron, and you know, it's pretty pretty cool. I think the biggest thing is like the two month update thing. I think that's actually like yeah, low key yeah, kind of big. Yeah, I think that's really big. I'm I'm very excited for that. I feel like more frequent Balance is just gonna like let them like do more like wacky things and learn more about how balance no more shaolin meta yes no more 12 volt meta yes I don't know, hopefully no. hopefully well, we're still what happened to this, for this patch or are you talking about like future i'm hoping with like the two month thing they just say oh people are complaining about 12 volt say less wow i'll say we we did have we had a meeting a related meeting. we had a meeting about it and i'll tell you that i i gave as much feedback as i could about the current metagame. So if the next patch, not this one, obviously, because by the time we had the meeting, the patch show is like a day later. So obviously, you know, right. they were they were asking for feedback for yeah, future yeah, patches. Next, yeah. But yeah, but I mean, in general, I think we gave anything that we could. I think we gave a good amount of feedback about what needed to be changed from. I asked the the PCML Merc and Keyboard Discord. And they pretty much gave a full thing. And Stigma did too. He was also yeah. there to be asked. So your team Stigma got to would be a good person to ask. He was our drafter in PWC. <laughs> so, cool battle pass things. I always think the splash art looks like so good. But sometimes it goes in game. I'm like, ah, Koga has bananas on his hands. Um... The guns look a little. The guns do look a little strange, but I do like the reloads, I, I think, a lot of the time. The only thing I'm iffy about on these skins is is how similar Leon looks to Furia, but I, I think once you're in game, the silhouettes are different enough. But just in different. the splasher, it really does. Like wh when I saw that skin, it's like, oh, it's someone is literally just getting Furia Team placed Furia. on them. But I, I, I think the colors for Leon, the colors for the recolor of Leon are make it stand out enough. There yeah. was also that concern with the um, the Dragon's Call Cassie skin a while back, that it was very similar to Leon. Mm. Um, but I think the I think the silhouettes are the most important thing, and they stand out enough. I think yeah, a lot of a lot of games pick that up from TF2, where like no matter what, you can even in like a completely shadowy room, you can tell who you're fighting against because the silhouettes of every character are so distinct, and having those outlines even amplifies that even more. So when you're when you're fighting against someone, even if you can't see anything because of the lighting, in Paladins you'll have the outline, and there's only five people they could be. <sighs> I actually yeah. had one game uh, a while back on Jag Falls where I lost outlines. <laughs> I remember I was I, in I feel that. like... That's a new one. Sorry. 
Uh, yeah. It's more of like a sound thing for me, bro. I don't know. I feel like a lot of the characters make really distinct sounds. That helps me more, I think, I'm not gonna lie. That's also why so many skins were banned. <laughs> yeah, that is fair. Bring Honestly, the day they unbanned <clears throat> Fish Geno skin, I'm gonna be very, very happy. <laughs> blub blub! Yes, sir. Hey. Wasn't it unbanned right. in, in, P in PPC for a while? Like, they didn't catch up on the... Yeah, I mean, I didn't tell them about it, but they didn't ban it. Alrighty. So, um, first balance change in this update, okay, before, which is before, pretty significant. Before, before we talk oh, about sorry. the balance, can we talk about this Willow mm -hmm. MVP pose real quick? Because this is a this is a static image. There are There are photos above it that are GIFs. So I can only conclude that this face, this wonderful, wonderful face, is going to be in the game. Oh boy, that'll next be fun. Patch and do you want me to do you want me to launch the PTS and double check? I can I can oh, do God. that. <laughs> well, I'm just saying because if it is, um, this is a great addition to the game, and I look forward to it very much. <laughs> That's what the logo for the podcast should be. Just the <laughs> face. <laughs> Wait, is the PTS up? Uh, I haven't played it yet. I'm gonna Honestly, assume yeah. it might be. Okay, Neko, High Res Neko has one minute played on it in the last two weeks, so I actually have no <laughs> idea if it's up or not. That, uh, that's a pretty good con emote. I mean, there wasn't enough change yeah. for me that mattered to make me really play PTS, to be honest. Yeah, no true. This, this was definitely, this is a, a very light balance-wise. Yeah. Um, to get ready for season four, but there yeah. is some significant stuff in here. Season four is definitely going to be the. All right, the game's going to be very different. I hope. But yeah. what, what I what I can what I can say, I mean, I think that a lot of the players and because we can just before we go over the specific changes in particular, I think a lot of people can agree that there are a few outliers, but as a whole, I think this is some of the most balanced the game's ever been. Yes. It, 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 there, there's like sub there. There's the must bans. But beyond that, like you can play yeah. from the bottom of the tier list to the top. Yeah, and, and, I feel and like most fans have been a thing for a while too. Like I don't know. Yeah. Like Makoa back then, Torvald's kind of always been that way, and except for like a couple months this year. Torv is either Torv is one of those characters that's, I mean Makoa too to an extent, but Torv has either been in the dumpster or at the top of the meta. Yeah, that's very true. So we got to bring back the nullify Torvald. I just realized that this was in frame, by the way. This was a this was a gag gift that we got. Don't don't mind the, <laughs> don't mind I, the I toilet it's paper. <laughs> it's a hot commodity these days. Oh no. <laughs> but actually, I'm just happy about this Strix this Strix nerf, by the way. I mean, I, I, I I'm just... I mean, it's a it's I'm a really big there nerf. There is a Strix nerf. I want him yes. to use his pistol. I want I want the character that's that's whole identity is rifle at long range and pistol at close range to actually have a reason to use his pistol ever because right now you just quick scope it 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 does not let the champion's identity exist because I it's mean, always yeah. better to just, just use your rifle a hundred percent of the time even if sometimes it's even better to just reload in a fight because you'll be able to kill him with the first shot after if you headshot um I'm gonna go know. on like a mini thing I guess like yeah I mean. You should have to use your whole kit, I guess, in a way like that. But they also, like, nerfed his pistol a lot back then. Because remember when he had, like, crack shot, it oh, did God. more damage than he had yeah. a snipe. That, that was a good reason to use pistol then. But, like, the pistol DPS just isn't really even. Like, even next patch, I don't think there'll be people switching to it that often. No, just, probably like, not. One shot. But I want like, people to feel, I I, I, it should feel bad to have to use your rifle at close range. Because he's a long-range character. He should not be rewarded at all ranges. I'll, uh, if he's using his long-range <laughs> gun. Uh, maybe, I don't know. I think, I think it's, it's a good first thing. step. It's a good first step. Yeah. I, oh, I wasn't really that upset about Strix. I think he's definitely like annoying to play against sometimes, but like this is like this is a really big nerf. Like a whole point two five yeah. seconds between every shot. Like I think that a like a fire rate like not nerf was definitely the way to go. But like if this makes it to the point where he like doesn't have as good of a matchup against Kanessa, then like. It might be that there's like eh. Nessa all of a sudden just kind of. I like that's what worries matters. me about this. Like is that like this this stealth is what gives him the advantage in the one v one. Yeah, though. well, there's that, and I don't think the one v one is even relevant because I feel like if you're playing frog right and you both have a sniper, I don't think Strix wants to like take that with Nessa very often anyway. Like I, I think if like Nessa hits a shot, it's over. Like she has the potential to one tap him unless he runs health. 
and it's like yeah. then you have to run health on Strix and you have to run like less either movement speed, less ammo, something. You have to give up something for it. That's kind of rough. I don't know. Uh, the, the thing that's going to affect it more is he can't just like... So a lot of backline DDs, will you pick them when they're free? So like, like if you were picking between Strix and Victor, you would want Victor more when he's free firing than Strix next patch because Strix will have less overall damage in a team fight than Victor would. Which is going to hurt him a lot in like team fights, I think, more than like, like matchups less specifically. DPS. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It just means like, if Knessa and Strix are both free firing and not shooting each other, Nessa will get more value. So therefore, Nessa has the advantage, like overall, which she already kind of does in a way, by just shooting tanks because she just burns them faster and more effectively. Honestly, plus like True Grit didn't get nerfed, which is kind of weird. I I don't know. That is definitely on my season I feel like four you wish list. Both snipers. That is on my season yeah, four wish list. I think for Nessa sure. needs Nessa, Nessa definitely needs some touches, but I feel like Strix was more of a standout than Nessa. Really? Yeah, yeah, oh. I do. That is weird to me. I'm still a bit traumatized by like console Strix just stealthing into the back line. So I mean, if you you, you mentioned Merc and keyboard, Merc literally played Strix on the point. <laughs> He, like, he I also would... think a lot of the PCML teams were there's a de definitely like a big skill gap between like the top three and like the bottom five, you know. That's true. Like, yeah. Like a lot of these players, this is like the first time they played against like controller DPS, you know. And I know the first time I played against it, that was like a rude awakening. It takes like, a while to get used to. So it like, I, I think it's more of just like learning how to play against it than it is being broken. Because now when I play against Strix, I'm not really like bothered. Like, next patch, I'll be happy when they pick Strix, to be honest, because it just gives me so much extra time to, like, kind of just farm him. I don't know. Like, if I, if I like, blink, dodge his shot on Udi, right, I just kill him. Like, unless he gets a hard pocket, I just kill him from that. Because he's, he's, by the time he hits the second shot, I've already hit three. Right, so is there any reason to, like, pick Strix over anything else, then, next patch? I would or honestly argue Shrapnel will be better than Strix next patch. It's just a, a theory. But I, I don't know. Uh -huh. I think Shrapnel's just gonna have more damage in the future. I, I think it's I think it's dependent on like the kind of fights you're taking, right? Because I think if you're yeah. against a pass, if you're against a more aggressive comp, I feel like I feel like maybe you want Strix over over the Vic because of the stealth and the burst potential. But if you're against like a more passive like slow comp, then like the the DOT is maybe a little better. Yeah. Because you can wear away at them. I, I think it, it becomes situational, and, and he's specific on his maps. And in my I just think that's how snipers should be. You right. shouldn't be able to pick them anywhere be, be just because of how they function right they should be super weak when they actually get pressured uh, because that's not their range and yeah. i think strix like if you can play a comp where maybe he can use the stealth to, to run away or reposition when he gets pressured like if, if you can play pick him to his strengths he'll still be okay uh, i think like against a passive frog comp but I, I i think i agree that like against a more defensive line you could use that vic just for corner poke afterwards for the alt because you'll charge it so fast as is but i still think he's playable in his in his situations so while we're on the topic of of these stealthy back line i'm going to move down the balance a little bit to shaw uh he's also getting a small nerf uh to sand trap the duration of the cripple is going from two seconds to one second i believe yep um just on the AoE, correct? Just on the AoE. Uh, no, the, no, the cripple overall. Duration of cripple so is by one second. Yeah, so yes. that's fine. Sandtrap has a downside now. And, I I, and to be totally honest, I don't think it hurts them because I think the value of Sandtrap is to apply that burst. AoE to stop 100%. the movement and for the burst. So I don't, uh, it, it'll hurt. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be that drastic. I actually think this is the way he should have gotten nerfed. Everyone was like really complaining about it, like all these like NA ranks players and EU rank players. But I didn't really ever find Shaw like hardcore oppressive. I just found him more of like as a nuisance, right? And I think that's maybe just like a lot of playtime into him and like a lot of playtime with him. But I don't think the way he plays would be changed. I just think he gets away with less when Riz like he just falls off harder with Rizzo. I think like I also think you can, time, debate, you can debate for yeah. other talents too. Yeah, I I don't know. People were saying he should have got nerfed more. Like they they, they were, people were saying like maybe fifty less damage on explosive or like just not applying cripple on AOE was a big one. Yeah, not applying cripple on AOE. I'm indifferent about it. In a way, that's kind of what you pick it for because you could just go recurve and burn a rom 
relatively just as fast. So it's it's hard to say, but that would be a way of not <laughs> making people happy who dislike it. I, I honestly think this is the right, right way to go about it. Though. I agree with like how they nerfed this one. Mm -hmm. The AoE hit, is, I think, is solid in, in general, but the, the damage is still going to be there, so he'll still it'll still be a good pick in those matchups yeah. against like DPSs who play who'll play like health cards. Or, or maybe if you catch a DPS not running health card, swap to sand trap, and then suddenly the, them not being at twenty four fifty means you two shot them. Whereas yep. not having the sand trap doesn't make a difference if they're over that that threshold. So if you if you are going that far, you can maybe even debate for recurve to have a better yeah. chance to kill them in, yeah, in, in that sure. situation because you'll charge your shots just a little bit faster. Yeah, that makes sense. Alrighty, so looking uh, also the last DPS getting some changes in this patch is Vivian. Um, base damage is going down 10 per bullet from 170 to 160. Uh, nowhere to hide is getting nerfed, which I'm happy about, and so is unfair advantage. So, uh, unfair advantage, I believe, is the shield duration, shield duration going from one second to 0.8 seconds scaling, and nowhere to hide from one second to 0.7 seconds. Um, I don't understand why North America wasn't playing Nowhere to Hide at 5 already. Dude, it's such a good card. That card is ridiculous. It's Cassie all um, on cooldown. <laughs> I can sort of explain that one, actually. Well, at least in, like, PPC, or, like, Worlds. So, you know how, like, Sky was, like, hard meta? Like, if you look at a lot of, like, the, the bands and stuff, like, usually if Sky was gonna get picked, it would never, like, ever be in the Vivian. Like... Every player who had like a Vivian loadout, including me, because Sigma hates Vivian, so I had to play it. I fed my brains out of Vivian, that's why I never play it. But I had a like a reveal build just for like Sky, and it's just like that was like the big hey Sky, you can't play the game this time. So it was run, but it was extremely like aids to play against. <laughs> like I don't know, it's one of those things that like doesn't need to be in the game. I feel like that much or that effectively because there's like. There used to be like hardcore reveals, like Strix Flare reveal, and then there was wow. like extended mm -hmm. duration on hunting party, like hunting party marks. Those were, just, I mean, it's still a thing, but it's like less of a thing. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I I dislike Vivian as a character, so my bias sense is like, okay, cool, it got nerfed, but I don't actually think the nerf was like necessary at all, like any of the nerfs that were like made, to be honest. Yeah. But like, I'm not mad about it. Yeah, I, like playing against Viv for me is just like. I'm okay to see her nerfed. I don't know if it was needed. Like, yeah, yeah. That's basically it. Like, if you're gonna nerf her, this is a good way to do it. It's just, was it needed? Maybe. I feel like part of the frustration just comes from she can throw a, a booby trap mine, and essentially, if if you go in that lane, you are revealed for five seconds. Yeah. And also, just if you don't, like, say it's in sun on jag it's like around a corner in one of the doors you walk into sun you take the 600 you get displaced and then also they know you're there for five seconds yeah i mean to be fair that's a lot of value but like that's also like an entire legendary and five points into a card so like i don't feel like i feel like that should get value if you're investing that much into something but like yeah i mean it's definitely like a bit annoying to be revealed like all game when you're, you're playing Minesweeper yeah. all of a sudden, <laughs> but I don't know. It's like I, I don't hate it, but it's it's not the worst. I guess I'm not really gonna complain. I don't know. I'm just happy that Vivian could potentially be. More. I'm just happy if Vivian is not being picked as much at the high level because I want to see characters that reward more. Skill. Skill. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's yeah. what it is. She's a, she's a simple character. And, and I mean, I, 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 I don't like constantly drawing comparisons to, to TF2, but that's where I really got my, my start, you know, playing from... Right. I've been play, I'm still playing that game competitively. I mean, maybe the last season was my last season, but it was eight years. And, like, I play a character that is basically Vivian. I, I, I'm, I'm slow. I have oh, a, you're talking a, about TF2? A, yeah, I, I play, I play Heavy <laughs> yeah. in TF2, right? And the reason yeah. that Heavy doesn't get, get played is because it's not... Uh, my skill doesn't matter as much. He's not as good but the characters that and the more serious competitive mode they get played are the ones that take you know more movement more like technical skill just to just do little things they have projectiles and things like yeah. that they normally take more more EDM it's just, drum it's just nice to see yep. yeah characters that that have more to get out that need more skill to get better things out of them 
as yeah. the ones that are being picked at the highest level with the best players. If if the if a character like Vivian is just outperforming them, then I think that's a that's a that's an yeah. issue at, at, at the core, and that's right. why they're they're hitting her as hard as they are. So yeah. you got that with like Saris, right? It's like Saris is like that sort of character except for supports. Yeah. So... She should she should never be the best healer in the game because she is so easy. Yes, which makes me makes me a little bit sad. I like playing Saris, which for some reason, a lot of people don't, but I like playing Saris. I mean, ideally, the best support in the game is, like, Damba, just because yeah. of, like, how much you have to, like, do. Mm. But it's, I mean, he, obviously, that's why I said pockets should get nerfed, because they're a lot easier to play, and they give you a lot more. I don't know. Oh, my value. Like, um, I think a Ying and, Ying and Damba, like, should, Grover, I, yeah, yeah. I, in my ideal meta, should be the better, the best ones to play. Even, but... like, Grover, like, honestly. Yeah. But Grover's pretty good already, so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, speaking of these these console picks getting getting hit, Koga is getting a nerf. Uh, the yes. damage per shot going from forty to thirty six. Are you happy now, about this penguin? <laughs> yes, I'm so happy, dude. God, now, I thought that Koga was lame. <laughs> one thing that I one one issue that I saw with um with this nerf is that the, his damage is getting reduced. This is going to hurt Adrenaline Junkie too. Yeah, that's probably what it was. It should be for. scaled. I, I think it should be scaled because I think I, his adrenaline yeah. is kind of slow as it is. Yeah. I, I yep. still think that you look at it like this. You're saying double pocket Koga sucks. Koga shouldn't be getting nerfed because when you throw double boost on him, he's playable. Right? <laughs> oh no! It, two it, entire, entire characters makes him strong. Double pocket anything sucks ass to play it there. You don't no, want to play okay anything with, with double pocket. Double pocket and other things. Just Our double pocket it. emoji. I, I guess. I'm happy know, about it. Mm. I don't know, dude. Koga just has like a lot of. I don't know. I watch a lot of PCMO because I used to like coach like two teams over there. And I, I swear, bro, I saw Bond's team pick that character like every game. Like actually every game. Well, that was a lot of because because that was just a comfort pick for Dink. I mean, yeah. Like Dink was playing Koga like every like, other game. Well, again, yeah, controller. Like it's it's another it's yeah. also a comfort pick. I mean, the character's not ever gonna be good on PC again, but I'm not too mad about it. He's just it's like Vivian to me, dude. Like, I don't think it's literally just tracking. Like, you can time dash and it's more skillful than Vivian, but like, there comes a point where it's literally just him mowing you down because he has like a lot of healing. I would have preferred they nerfed cards that like give him self sustain than just outright saying, hey, you have less damage. Because I feel like touching or change numbers. Uh, the fact that his agility heal, like the, the healing while agility is active, the fact that, that scales up with trigger happy, which is just. Eh. I mean, that makes sense, how they word it. Yeah, I, I think, I don't know. I think maybe, like, if Shadow Step Koga is meta, I think it's a little better because that, that t it takes more to get more out of Shadow yeah. Step Koga. I agree. But yeah, Agility, I agree Koga, Agility Koga is literally just you're playing Koga. Yeah, you're just walking down people, literally. It's so lame. Like, yeah. I'm okay with Dash Koga because there's, like, timings. You can sort of, like, mid-max to get better, dodge stuff. I don't know. Agility just seems like, oh, look. The enemy team missed a shot, and you have 30% speed boost because Corvus exists now. Okay, yeah. well, you missed a shot, you lose. Like, I, I've already played Evie into that, which is supposed to be a good matchup, and I'll miss, like, one shot out of, like, five, and I'll just, like, lose that because of it. It's very unfun. It also kind of like, makes me a bit worried, like, if they do touch pockets, then, like... Because that's Koko's thing right now, right? It's like, he's good at pockets. I don't really see another situation where you'd pick him, to be no, honest. No, he's going to be, like, the worst character in the game. But, like, match. if like, they do get rid of pockets, then I think Koko's definitely going to need some, uh... Some assistance. I, so. I honestly preferred, like, the Claw Koga meta, where everyone would, like, hard pop Claw Koga. Like, it's kind of like a... Very uh, controversial opinion, maybe, but no, sorry, I, remember I, I you think playing it was a little Koga bit. Uh, I think it's a little bit more skillful in a way, I and mean, it's something I feel like, you know, you could actually get a lot of thought process out of because you have to switch between like both because it does do damage to yourself, you know, unless you're just getting a tour pocket. But that's, I mean, you gave them tour, so I don't know. Yeah, so it's, it's like what, you you got to you you got tour and Koga, you're probably okay anyway. Yeah. You can run anything at that point. I mean, especially yeah. played Claw Koga. He, of course, I, that was Parallax just being so much better than everybody else. But, yeah. Yeah, it looks I fine. remember the back it, cap. It's still all right. It's just risky. It's almost like a cheese strategy in that yeah. sense. Yeah. Like, I feel like you, it's you a lot have of characters. The snowball snowball draft. Yeah. I agree. Alrighty, so that'll be 
certainly interesting to see what happens to Koga because I, I don't know if he will become the worst character in the game simply because Moji does exist. I think Moji's actually okay. Like, Have you seen Hacha. Kaiser? Dude, Kaiser played her at PWC one game and like... He played her on like the worst Moji. Yeah, he, he, still did okay. he played it twice? Yeah. He played her twice. One game was like okay and then one game I think he just got... Oh, he just got destroyed I think. What is Moji's win rate? No, yeah, she's zero percent win rate. I have the P PWC stats up, by the way. I pulled them up ahead of time just so yeah. I could like get that. But Talk zero percent. One of the I can get the screenshots actually. But it was like did, okay, Splitstone one was the one I watched. Destroyed. Yeah, Splitstone. He went. He did okay. He went even. I think. Yeah, Splitstone. Yeah. I, remember I think that was like the hardest comp for him, dude. I was so confused why he picked Moji on Split because it's literally like you play. What do you play into? Like Buck and like Andro or something. Like I don't know. I feel like if you're gonna pick like Moji, it needs to be on like Jag. Yeah, right. it was oh, into right. Buck Andro Willow. Okay. Yeah, that's and like the worst yeah, mode. <laughs> yeah, he managed to go 16 and 16. So he had like 126 yeah, damage. He did okay. Crazy. And then the next map on Jaguar Falls, he went 4 and 10. So what? he got uh, he got obliterated on Jag. But that was into Cassie Andro Zin. I feel like that's actually like better. <laughs> A matchup part. I don't know. I guess they just like played range. Soul Tank Rom. Maybe he felt like he couldn't burn the Rom. That, yeah. I do think Moji's a lot harder to triple than Double Tank, to be fair. Alrighty, so speaking of flanks, we have Zen. Uh, this is a base kit nerf with a card buff. So the movement speed buff in Billow went down from 30% to 10%. Uh, but the card up in Smoke, which increases movement speed in Billow, went from 8 to 11%. Uh, Zen builds are incredibly flexible right now, so this is just an effort to, uh, from what it looks like at least, an effort to change the base kit down a little bit and to uh, to put some more strength in the cards. I feel like it's almost an indirect nerf to guillotine. You know, like you try to just ult the tank, get get a kill, and then you try to build an ult and live. Like that might make it like Oof. a bit more difficult to, to well, get out of speed. You... Right, because he buffed like the loadout card. So, I don't know. Right, then you're taking away some other things. Yeah. It's still a base nerf because, like, even if you if you max out the loadout card, you're only getting 15% more. So you're still yeah. like, you're still getting 5% less. I, I don't think it's that bad though, because at the end of the day, Billow isn't really like as much of the getaway. It's more of the cleanse, right? Like you're yeah. not using Billow in fights to to actually fully run away. I'm it's, using it's, it more as a reset, honestly. Yeah. I, I use it to reset world, like personally. Like and get healed. If there's like yeah. if there's, like if you can get Grover Grover Blossom, yeah. like he's gonna wait for your Billow. Or you know like how like Androxus just use reversals to like get around a corner. That's yeah. kinda how it'll be used. Just like a slight corner change probably. I think it's bigger than we're thinking it is though. Like I think on like sub maps it'll really like, I think on Ice Mines, that's going to be really rough. Because I feel like Ice Mines is the one map where you actually do use Billow to live more than Whirl. Just, like, in Barn, mm -hmm. at least. So I think he'll be kind of meh on Ice Mines, minus, like, his ult. Yeah, I don't know. That's enough to play him on Ice Mines, though. I don't think so. I think, like, a lot of, like, you have to draft for tanks at that point, I guess. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I think, like, him just getting bullied the whole game and not even, like, getting a chance to, like, walk in a barn is, like, okay. Plus, dual potential like... doesn't really go down at all. Like, he still he still can just spam his, his yeah, heavy, he heavy just swing doesn't get out around corners. Much. He could play, he could play a little, just a little further back, and he's fine. It really is, like, yeah. you play three steps further back, and if your team knows that, it's a little bit better, right? You just play far enough back yeah. where you can get out with the 10% pillow. Or maybe you just play one less point in Malice. People are playing Malice 4. If you're playing Malice 4... Yeah, Malice... Malice you, you have room for things. Okay, you I, I don't think you smoke. get to... I, no one gets to argue about Zen who plays Malice. I don't <laughs> That card is so dumb. It's not even good. What's the reason... I thought, okay. Cause but I thought, it looked so fast. <laughs> okay, I thought it was so that you could just, like, spam Yomi's faster or something. Like, I don't... I'm not going to understand it, but that, that was the reasoning that I heard, and I don't understand it, so... Is that... Or is it just... No? Not good? Uh, the, the <laughs> idea is that he can play sort of like Scuttle Dredge. That's like my best comparison. Which is so the like... worst Dredge <laughs> tower. Let, let me just make sure that's, that's uh, up Second there. worst. The Harpoon no. explosion is so bad. Mm. No, it's better than Scuttle. There's no way. I swear. How? Because Scuttle doesn't actually add anything to your kit. 
Abyss Spike gives you a chance for burst damage and, and, and traps, which Dredge It's sort of the damage. same argument as Booby Trap. You can just close off a land. It does a thousand but damage. you can't shoot it's it. It's actually a lot. I think it would be better if I could have two of them down instead of one. No cap. Well, I'll tell you, I've been messing around with Abyss Spike. If you're comfortable with it, it is I better than Scuttle. Because you don't have to scale either. You don't scale. From the first round, you are you are operating at your max potential, whereas Scuttle, you're like, got Deft Hands too. Still not doing my burst damage combo. I'm just gonna run Herald, dude. I'm over it. <laughs> Herald's the best. I mean, yeah. Combo, but... I feel like a Vist is almost like Scorn, where it's like, okay, well, if I know they're running it, then I do not stand in it. And I do not get hit. Well, it's, it's uh, he can throw it at what, around corners and, and keep you stuck uh, in. I mean, he can keep it in like, okay, I'll go back to ice mines. He can just throw it at the doorway, and it's like, well, you want to walk here? Oh, you see You're it? Taking damage. Well, I guess you just can't walk there. That's tough. We can talk <laughs> about this. It. We can talk about th yeah. this after. We should we should keep discussing this. And yeah. I think next in line, if we're going tanks, would be Barrack. Uh, who's getting six? So speaking of oh surviving over some damage, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's gonna help. This will be fun. Oh god. Okay, I feel like Barrack started off this patch as a joke, and then people realized, wait a minute, Anara's dead. So wait, what's another main I'm tank? Wait, Barrack. Barrack is really good. Hold up. I'm gonna go off on a tangent for a quick second. So yeah, what Fish said is correct. Everyone's like, ah, oh, Barrack is some ass. This thing, and we started running solo tank con, right? Oh, we hit some ults. We're doing great. And then Pickle Pepper's like, oh, we're just gonna pick Barrack. And we're like, okay, we don't care about Barrack. It's and then garbage. we started picking Barrack when Yeezy started taking Khan every game. And we were like, huh, this kind of just dookies on Khan. And then we're like, well, Adara sucks, so we'll just pick Barrack instead. And it turns out, Barrack is like the best main tank, because he farms the other main tanks. And next pass, he's becoming the best tank in the game, so it's interesting to me. I'm not sure why, but you know what? I'll just ban him. Oh, we're banning Barrack now? Oh god. Every game, next patch. Oh man. I don't know, I, I feel like... Barrack bans, what year is it? Oh god. I feel like if you're picking, like, yeah, he, he can do well against the other main tanks, but then you could just play, like, a raw main tank, run it down kind of style. Uh... And then take, a fi take the 5v4, yeah? Like, you can just play, yeah. you know he's gonna be on point, he doesn't have the ability to rotate <laughs> like Nara. I don't think he'll be on point, I don't think he'll just be in your face. Because now he just duels everything, right? Like, next patch? I'm, I'm talking about this current patch. Next oh, patch, I agree, yeah, I agree with yeah. you. Yeah. But I'm saying, like, right now, if you're saying, like, he's, yeah, he's winning yeah. he's winning duels against the main tank if you're giving him duels with the main tank. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Well, then I feel like it's more of, like, a counter pick it of, like, okay, they have a main tank that we want no. to bully. Or is, like, a, okay, well, this is yeah, going to be now a he is. discount we're Anara, much. where we're just going to mm -hmm. want to play off point. And yeah, the thing is, is the best currently, thing that plays currently I think, depending on the back line, it can still be even. Because it's, like, Barrack, when Barrack gets knocked down, his his whole thing is, run away, but, like, Khan can actually shout and, like, buy time if, if there's both the back lines are helping them, right? In the 2v2, I think the Barrack ends up being a little bit hurt. But next patch, once he has that extra health, he'll be able to live long He's enough. He's a fragger. <laughs> he'll be able to live long enough in front where that doesn't matter. But right now, he is fragile enough. Like, there, where, there's yeah, the there's argument... There is the argument I've seen, which is the fuel efficiency five barrack. You get the two and a half second duration <laughs> rocket boots, and you get in and out of every still, situation. Exactly. I think you would just run level two on that. Yeah. Honestly, you don't need five. <laughs> you need five. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Having an ability that makes you invincible, I think so. <laughs> I, I, I feel like this is gonna be like a weird one for Harris to get feedback from because everyone at the beginning patch was like, "Oh my god, buff barrack." Like, I even put it in my AOC video, I'm like, yeah, yeah I buff, I'm gonna I buff Barrack, and then uh, they're gonna buff Barrack, and I was like, no, what did you do that for? And they're like, well, what do you guys want us to do? But I don't think people are gonna be upset about it. I do just think it's gonna be something like six months into the year, they're gonna be like, yeah, Barrack's pretty strong. We're gonna take like 300 HP away, and then just leave it at that. The, the, the biggest issue is that he's, he performs so well in low levels because people just die to turrets. Like people just like I mean, the bad like in like bronze games, Barracks put down two turrets and topped it. Like it, it it it's brutal how strong he is there. So like the feedback they get from a ton of the community is like, oh my god, Barrack is insane. Because nothing I'm else hits shots. Taking 120 damage every. <laughs> <laughs> like people just take so much damage from 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 this yeah. shit. So Literally, kind of like, mines do more damage than Barrack turrets. Yeah, and yet somehow. Barrack turrets are, are Barrack tends to up top damaging in these low levels when he's missing half of his shotgun shots. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He's just gonna be the best tank, besides you know when you pick Torvald. But at that point, well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, honestly, 
The Koa is not. The Korv is such a tank. He's look at him. He has a mustache. He has health. Korv's mm. a tanky support. Like Grox Grox's a healing DPS. You know who who else is a tank? Khan and Khan is getting buffed. Oh, well, speaking of unnecessary yeah. tank buffs. <laughs> Khan is going uh, from 180 to 190 damage ranks. per shot, right, and uh, 100 more healing on shout. I feel like the shout healing, it doesn't really matter, because like, you're usually shouting to immune damage more than... Does it heal teammates, though, for 1100? I, yeah, I think yes, so. Yes, yeah. it does. Yeah, I assume so. But like, I feel like most of the time That's you're shouting good, to immune, I... immune damage more so than heal yourself. I mean, you can you, shout to There's heal a yourself, lot of but... times people heal their teammates with shout. It's more often yeah. than you think. It's one of those like small buffs on like shout. They'll be like, "Huh, that's kind of big." I think the damage is more important though. Yeah, because yeah. he's like, gonna charge ult faster too. Yeah, yeah, yeah Khan yeah. already builds ult. ult. Uh, like, have you ever just like just pick Khan, go like storm bolts, go in the shooting range, and like headshot the Fernando? He builds his ult. Storm bolts like, is gonna be in like, the game, low key theoretically. Just be I, and I, I don't know if it's gonna be better than Leon Shield in some situations, but like, it'll be pretty good. Like, if you're in the ROM and you just run storm, like, you get ult really fast. You get an ult. <laughs> Like, what's this actual DPS increase? Like, what's Khan's fire rate? It's probably like 60 or something. I'll check the Extra. wiki. Yeah. Cause I, I just don't really know why you would, um... Like, Yeah, I, I, I like the chat going triple tanks. I can see it. I think, I think you can only triple tank with Varric, though. Like, I think triple tank without Varric is kind of... Kind of Triple yet. take, you say? <laughs> yeah, we got yeah. some. I have we some got experience the in that here. department. He's going from 640 DPS to 680 DPS. Yeah, that's that's at base though. With, with the base at the base, yeah, strong bullets. That's that's not that's a four, that's. I mean, 40 DPS isn't nothing, but it's also. It's like two more ult charge. Is it as old a two percent, two percent a shot right now? I think it's something like that, like two percent a hit shot. Not a hundred percent on that, but hmm. I do know that like it's going to like seven forty DPS ish. Very rough, not completely done math, but the rough <laughs> math is about seven. Is about seven. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely a not insignificant buff. Right. Yeah. yeah. It it's... will it will change yeah. the time to kill. Right. I think it'll make the Khan Barrack matchup interesting if they're both on point. Because, like, Leon Shield, because, like, I was playing that in some bugs today against Barrack with Leon Shield, and I was kind of smoking him. And then, uh, next patch, I might smoke him harder, minus the health. <laughs> or I just won't, and I'll just ban Barrack. I don't know, like, the only thing that, like, worries me about this is that, like, Khan might just bully off tanks super hard, so we might get to, like, I remember, like, the stun Khan meta where it was, like, he, that was a thing, and Khan just bullied off tanks all game. It's like that kind of worries me because, like, uh, I think he's actually going to go on off tank again. People know. are still playing Khan as off tank to bully other tanks, so that kind of remains unchanged. But there's a lot of people playing him in main. I think he's just still going to continue to be flexible. And but people are he's, still like, he's other played in the offline, he's played in the offline off more. Tank. It's more to play into Rom and Ash to stop their escapes. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be good in the Atlas when he gets some bent, actually. I think you, like, block rewinds, and then you block a lot of what Atlas does. I don't know, I think Khan is really good in Atlas, really enough. I don't. I, I think they kind of cancel each other out a lot of the time. Because yeah. Atlas has pretty solid damage output. Yeah. And, like, assuming, again, assuming we're at this one, this, assuming we're in a 2v2 situation, I feel like neither Atlas of them probably, really... probably, yeah, yeah. I, feel I, you. I don't think either of them really collapses. Like, it really depends on if the Khan blocks the setback like if the deja vu is good and it goes past and the con turns and blocks it then like good play on the con now he probably has an advantage i think it really comes down to how the deja vu hits or the atlas is stupid and is running on uh, uh, temporal divide and wow. can't do anything to the con and gets yeah. blocked <laughs> or if the con shouts in the open because you just rewinded when he shouts yeah. yeah you can yeah and you can splash behind and he won't have a he won't be able to turn around the with his shield if he's I will say, I think Atlas definitely enables, like, if you're taking like, a 2v2, like, just, like, I don't know, something in danger, like, on Frog Isle, and you're taking that 2v2, then I definitely think the Atlas shield, like, is gonna help a lot in that matchup, I think, just, like, being able to have a DPS peak for effectively free is gonna 
probably every like four that. seconds getting the right build. Too. Right. Like if you get if you get resets with it, it's just so insane. Plus it heals the Atlas while it's up. Like it's it's a lot of it's a lot of utility. I'm starting to think that if Barrack and Khan become really strong, I think we might see more Tiger, or like on Ooh. a lot of maps, because sword sword piercing shield and like just bursting them straight through without having to worry is such a big deal i think and like he's already pretty good when he gets pressured anyway i i think we might just end up seeing more more tiger more more even like i don't know fucking more imani for verticality and for the ice the frost bomb to go over the shield plus the inferno cannon maybe over the shield if you get a pick on the back line or backline pressure like i think we might see some of these more niche backline picks to deal with those tanks more if they are that much of a threat Interesting. I will say more Amani would currently be like one Amani would be more Amani than we're than I'm seeing right now. So she's I being think... picked in Brazil to solid success. It's just really? people aren't really willing to play with her because FPS. If you're playing Fire Amani, oh. that that's the whole thing. And Frost Amani now is like you. It's really hard to use. I, I think it's just so difficult to be good with with the. It just feels so wrong. It's the a lot of weirdly speeded projectiles. Yeah. I think that's the worst. Thing. I still think she. Has, I think she has a solid. I think she has a solid core though, to, to back it up. And I, I think we can ask since I brought that note up. I think looking at this, other than like my comment about Tiger maybe against these tanks, is there anybody that you think will kind of come out at, as a as a winner in this patch that wasn't necessarily on the changes here? Like who 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 can see, find themselves being played more that maybe isn't being seen as much right now? Like maybe isn't being seen. Yeah, like who? Probably who just Tiger. I don't know. Yeah, you probably Tiger. Yeah, Tiger. Who are being changed? Who, sorry, who aren't being changed? Who are being seen that might maybe be played? Like who? Who is the winner of this that isn't actively getting changed? I mean, Trapnel Vic. That'll be nice. I think people are still sleeping on Combat Medic Vip. Like it, it's not okay. that big of a deal here. Okay, listen, Penguin. You can let me talk about this. Like they, like if you think about like what Pip doesn't want to play into, it's like hit scan backliners because he needs to peek to get his heals off. So like Strix and Vivian getting like, decently sized nerfs, sure. But like, it's Loki gonna help him. I feel like Pip is already slept on. Like I don't play Pip much because I play on a European team, and Pip on 140 ping feels kind of rough. But if someone is on an actual server, um, then I don't know. I think he's super slept on. But like maybe better than Damba Ying right now. Sure. He's situations. just too inconsistent. I mean like. There's just too many factors, like for the in projectile feeling, like your team needs heals when they need them, and you're like, hold on, it's almost there, buddy. <laughs> it's coming. I got you. It's coming. It's like if everything that you did as Damba was a gourd that you threw. That's <laughs> combat medic. And like you know, sometimes you're like, ah, oh, it's so close. It's gonna get us. Oh, nope, he's dead before I can even get there. Like if you're running ripened gourd or something, like it, it, it's really that as a character, combat medic. That's why people run mega potion instead because it's like, well, my healing or combat medic. Won't get there in time, but the damage and the slow will matter more, and I can at least get this big AOE Damn. every second. I don't know. I think Mega Potion is uh, is um spicy and outclassed by Combat Medic, but that's I'm biased. I also just really like playing Fip, so, <laughs> so that's just me. <laughs> yeah, Strapnel Victor, Tiger, um, maybe flanks that don't want to play into Shaw as much. Maybe, maybe uh, I don't think time. that matchup changed at all. <laughs> to keep it on. I don't now. think people are even picking Shaw right now, anyway. Uh, the only time I've seen him is like as a counter to Rom or as a counter to Fox, I have, and I don't think PWC, he's a counter to Rom. In the PWC, he was one of the lowest picked DPSs. Oh, uh, like. I thought you were just talking in general, because no, what I see. Chat. I think my uh, internet died for like one second. Yeah, I'll be back soon. I promise. I what think do you think about the um, the Drogos going next patch? Uh, uh, I think Drogos is already insane. Not gonna lie. So I don't think that really changed because Drogos, if Drogos does have a hundred percent win rate. This Ooh. is a, this is a lot of uh, welcome. hit scan or <laughs> coming. All all I'm saying one, is one game. If, <laughs> one game. If I was if I'm playing Worm Death Drogos, right? What characters do I not care about? Well, I don't care about Strix and I don't care about Vivian. The only characters I really care about are like. Andro, Andro, sometimes Ken, Maeve, Leon? sometimes Maeve, and Ken. I don't care about Leon unless it's like Serpent. Serpent and Le Serpent and like Bazaar are like the only maps that are hard to play Worm Guts on. Because I, I don't know, I'm one of those people who like played Worm Guts so much I could probably make it work on like any map at this point. 
which probably isn't what Drogo's Worm Jets is meant to be, but like theoretically speaking, I think Drogo's Worm Jets, since we're talking about like what's going to come out of the meta randomly, it's probably going to be the thing. I, I just, I don't know, I feel it. I mean, I think I think it makes sense. Like in general, Worm Jets, the way that Meta Pusher used to always talk about Worm Jets was like, it's, sniper, right? it's a sniper. Yeah, it's yeah. a projectile sniper. So you, you can play far enough away from them where it, you can deal with whatever, right? If so you're far enough away and you're just spamming a lane, people are going to eventually walk into it and you're going to have a solid ult that your team can follow up on at, at that level of play. Well, 100%. And like back then, Envy was playing into like anything with it. They would go to Bright Marsh, they would pick Worm Jets, Drogos, and they would take over your tree because Random yep. would hit everything from the sky. Your Eevee that you had couldn't deal with him. Like Worm Jets, Drogos shits on Eevee. Because the EV is just yeah. constantly trying to go for air shots. And I think it's actually pretty even. Is shoot down. It's just e so much easier for the Drogos yeah. than it is for the EV. I think at, like, high play, if you were to put, like... I mean, I'm talking about PPL. Think... Like, that was how we uh, thought in SS uh, in, on SSG. We were, like, random, like, FRZ on EV was, like, we should not, like, we need something else uh, for the Drogos. Because, like, I'm connecting air shots, but, like, his, like, if we're both hitting the same shots... Like, at the same yeah. level, his shots are just easier to hit. I always remember how Pan would describe it, because I used to vlog with Pan a lot. He would he described it as, like, the matchup is irrelevant. If I need to take it, I'll win it, because he said he would just hit two and back, I mean, make him just, back off. That's just the and ego that you would... need to play at that level, right? You think that, but when you're when you're when you zoom yeah. out and you look at the face, it's like, well, realistically, assuming when I'm not being cocky and thinking I'm better than all these other players, which DPS players just do because that's how they want to that's how you kind of have DPS to DPS players. Well, it's just the mindset you need to have because you're you're going there saying yeah. I'm going to outlane you because if you go in there saying well I'm going to get shit on by this guy you're going to lose. It's just the mindset you need to have. <laughs> yeah, I also just don't think there's a lot of drug players right now, so that might be the reason it yeah. might like not happen. But I can also see Pip coming out of the meta a little harder as well, like damage Pip. I've been sort of on the damage Pip train for like. This entire patch, ever since like the small buff to Catalyst. I was say, I remember playing that on PTS, and you we were like losing our minds over I Catalyst. Pull, I was actually gonna pull it out during the Worlds instead of BK on like the last game of Worlds, but then I was like, honestly, bro, I don't want to fuck this stuff. Saving. I mean, well, honestly, <laughs> saving strats for next uh, you season. Want, you want strats? Um, Pip's, Pip's safer than BK because Pip doesn't get. I won't get server fucked uh, as hard as BK. Well, what if you got a shitty server? <laughs> what, what I did get a shitty server. We were just better. Um, <laughs> well, you picked, uh, you picked the pip then. Um, we had a couple. Take I'm not gonna say. I, I'll probably say a few of them. Like, it's I remember we had a few, couple. By the time you compete again, it's gonna be so different. You it's gonna be. Yeah. It's gonna be season four, isn't it? Um, yeah. yeah. So we had, I mean, like, yeah, there you go. Plan. We had we had backup plans for a lot of like characters that we picked often, right? So we had we. So a lot of what we were doing in the two weeks prep for PWC is. We knew we were going to pick the whole time, so we always knew our fallbacks for, like, Stig would be, like, Ken Cassie, right? But that was, like, his thing. And then if he needed backups, like, they were better, he'd play, like, Shaw, as an example. Or, like, we would put him on, like, a flank at that point. And for me, I, I had, like, fallbacks for, like, blasters. So, like, if if we wanted the Willow this game into this comp and we couldn't get Willow, we would play the Pip. Like, that's just what we would do. We would just play Pip in place of Willow, and it would just do almost the same thing. But instead of winning with Faithfly, you would win with, you know, Polymorph. That's Yeah. And it was pretty effective. We had a lot of secret strats for, like, Lex, because that was, like, the only thing I was really scared of, is, like, pocketed Lex, even with, like, the sort of nerf change they did to him. I pretty much just practiced, like, a shit ton of Zin and, like, a shit ton of bows just to deal with, like, Lex. Like, we were, we were practicing a lot of double bow for, like, that console pockety flank, which is... I guess lucky because easy ran that every game. Um, I do think the one time we got out drafted was on Splitstone against Easy. Uh, the first time we played him, because mm -hmm. we were going into it with like a Willow draft, and then they went into us with like triple console DD, and I had the most unfun I've ever had on Willow, or most fun of least fun I've ever had on Willow. Yeah, that's that's a word. Oh, uh, I guess another strat is like, uh, so there's like this triple DPS. Like, we do triple deeps a lot in general just because we have the flexibility. Um, Talus was, like, a thing we were thinking about a lot. I it never came out because why would you ever play Talus against console? Yeah, I mean, I it's, liked you, it. You can think Everyone it's good, else but, like, it. when would you play the other stuff? Like, when would you play it over something else, right? Like, yeah. yeah. There's just, there's I, at that point, they were just, like, like when you'd play Andrew. <laughs> 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 like, yeah. How does the Talus look going in the next patch? 
I think he's underrated right now. I think on controller he still wins every matchup currently. I think the only thing that makes Talos like hard to play is um Shaw. Because it, originally it was Strix, right? But with the Strix nerf, I don't think Strix is as much of a problem to Talos anymore. Yeah, I think so mostly just Shaw. I think a lot of the time people like say like okay Talos, here here's your pocket. Go kill the back line. And like you couldn't really like they nerfed him, right? You couldn't do that anymore? And then people are like, ah, oh, no, Talos is bad. But it's like, I don't know if anyone has really tried ever, like, supporting a Talos any more than giving him, like, a, a, a mark, basically. Like, if you, what if you, like, send um, in a Talos behind a ROM? Like, I feel like that would still be insanely strong if you time so it. So I've right. been off-season scrimming a lot, which is kind of freaky of me. But uh, we, we, I play with, like, Nullified and a few others. And uh, we give Null Talos a lot, and he, like, hasn't done bad yet into, like, anything he's played against, realistically. Um, a lot of it's, like knowing when you don't need to dive and i feel like a lot of console players this might seem like insulting to their play style but they just always entered the back line every time versus they you know don't have to do that <laughs> there's very few times where i would see them like understand how to like win with talos versus just besides just like killing everything so like well I'll, I'll be like yo we can just win point which is burn point he would just like clip a barrack for like 3k i'm just like huh yeah talos is okay not gonna lie and PC Andrew doesn't beat console Talos. <laughs> like, he just loses that. I, like, I've tried. I 1v1 his Talos like three times on Andrew. I did not win a single time. Like, I wasn't even close. And I was hitting almost every shot. Like, actually, almost everything. It's literally just like. There's some matchups, like, crossplay wise, like that, that's going to keep some characters, like, in meta, I feel like. Like, Lex I and Talos, I think, are examples of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Lex and Talos, they obviously, they're, they're fantastic when you're playing the, the controllers with them. Yeah. I, I mean, speaking of just characters in general that have been successful, I had a little a little game I wanted to play because I think we're getting near near the end and won't have a chance to talk about PWC. I want you guys, the three of you, to give me who you think the top five characters oh God, with more than ten games. So like, played more oh, than no. ten times, right? Who are? I want you can you guys can write it down if you think it'll be easier. But the the top five win rates. Who oh, do we God. think with more than ten games? Unless like in you, the I mean, game you or in pro? In the PWC, all three regions combined. So it doesn't matter. It has to be more five? than ten games, right? Yeah, more than ten games. So I know like, who the number if, ones are. <laughs> if you, yeah, if I, if you give me Penguins, a character that is Drogos. over, if you have, if you give me a character that is less than ten games, but oh, but higher than, because there's seven characters that have the highest win rates, but they're all oh, super God. low play time. I think I already know what three of the five are so yeah if you you guys can go oh, in order no. if you want we can do uh, in my, on my screen it's fish not a penguin so oh, if you no. guys want to give me what you think your your top five obviously do all three and then we'll see who's closest oh man I should have... all three regions who do oh, you think all three regions oh no all, the... it, all of the pwc combined so who do you think with less than ten, with more than ten games, were the best five champions, the most winningest five champions. Man, how am I supposed to take Europe and beat Brazil into account, man? Those those guys play you, buck. If you, if you think they play good, buck. If you think champions are good, they'll they're they're winning. Man. So because Castle okay, played more so... than ten times. I don't because want to say spoilers. Spoilers. because Brazil exists. I'm gonna <laughs> say Buck is one of them. <laughs> well, we need to. We're going fish. Fish, okay. give me your five, and then Nada, give me your five, and then Penguin, give me your five. And remember, if you put one that's above, I'll let you know. If once all the fifteen champs are in. Okay. Um, I think Torv and Io are super safe picks because those characters okay. are like. I don't know if Tor. I don't know. Tor Torv is definitely. Not I doubt it's Torv. allowed through a lot, but like sometimes other regions would play him, and then there was also like sometimes where like Torv just got rolled, and I'm like, how is Torv getting rolled? What is happening? And then it's like, I'd be like, someone picked okay. Torv into so like Parallax. Think, but so you're saying Io and Torv? Torv Io. Um, okay. I think Rom could be up there because I think okay. you and BR drafted super poorly around Rom. Um, and then. <laughs> Um, that's a tough question, man. Uh, I wrote, I wrote down I, Grover I, Cassie. Wrote down Grover, Grover Cassie. Because I think 
those two, when they get picked, have really good matchups, but they're not going to be... They're going to be picked enough, like, over 10 times, but they're... When they do get picked, like, they... They're nuts. Like, Gro if po if pockets mm -hmm. didn't exist, Grover would be the best support, like, by a yes. mile. So Probably. Alright, Nada, do you have five? Yeah, so I went with Torv and Io. I feel like those are pretty safe. Okay. Um... I also I also said Rom for the same reason. Okay. Um, I know Brazil exists, so I just threw a buck out there. Okay. And then I said uh, Cassie probably because I feel like Cassie is just kind of sleeper, like in the game, okay. not really doing a ton, but it, it builds up. Okay. Like, you never so, think, oh, I'm getting absolutely slapped by this Cassie, but it just consistently then, performs always, well. Okay, right? Cassie's right. like never okay. a bad pick. Yeah. This is easy. Just, yeah. All right. So what are your five? All right, so Vivian has to be there. Cool and Z okay. and Prosper Logic farmed everyone with the Vivian. Okay. All right. Now we got Kinesa. I, I, I it has to be Kinesa. Though. Okay. I, I think and Stigma. Stigma and Logi, Logi made it look good. Okay. Uh, Maeve, for sure. Okay. Uh, and then Cassie and Grover. Okay. So, uh, I'll I'll tell you guys how about this. I'll give you points for how many you got over and I'll, and then you tell me which ones you think were wrong if you oh hope you guys were condemned so fish you had three right uh, uh, nada also had three right shit. and penguin had three right you all had oh. three. There was, was, it, was it Cassie Grover with a three or two? Cass well, actually, technically, Ooh. Penguin, you had like three and a half because Kinesa has a 78% win rate, but she was only played nine times. Damn. Oh. Basically, it, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Like, Sigma needs over, to go just a bit harder. I, I was just kind of thinking, there's no way Logic didn't pick that every game, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ooh, man. Okay, that's a, that's a toughie. So which two do you think you guys got wrong? Ooh, I feel like I got the ROM and and the bug. Okay. Fish? Uh, I think Torv. I think a lot of teams got Torv and then okay. f fed their brains out. So probably like Torv and... I, I mean, and I don't know if Grover was picked that much. but So Torv and Grover so, are probably the ones I got wrong. Okay. Your, the ones you got wrong, Fish, were Torv and Rom. Nada oh. got uh, Torv and Rom. You both got Torv and Rom wrong. Uh, yeah, I didn't think they five, got played enough. Top five in order, and none of the ones that you got wrong other than Kinesa were above these five. So, Io, Maeve, Buck, Grover, Cassie. Yeah. Torvald Wait, Vivian was, was not there? The what? Buck value, man. Vivian? Vivian's overall win rate in the PWC... Did fucking ride a two, you ruin it. <laughs> There's no way it was just him. 33 games played. 10 <laughs> wins. 23 losses. Ooh, she had a 33% no. win rate across all of the oh, PWs. That, uh, okay. that hurt. So, yeah, but that's yeah, the one so I got the, wrong. Understood. Yeah, that's that was like... the one you got wrong. Yeah, because Knesset was technically over. But the, the, the above that, like Gr Grok, Drogos, Pip, Talus, 100%. Right. One game each, basically. And then Ruckus, Willow, Knessa were the three that were more than like two games, but less than 10 that were over. So Ruckus had a 83% win rate. Willow had an 83% win rate, and Kinesa had a 78% win rate. So Man, I was, Ruckus I was always shows honestly up. sure on all five. I'm not going to lie. I, I was like, well, I know Maeve, Cassie Grover, and <laughs> Kinesa were all played by all the winning teams. <laughs> so yeah. Vivian was the only one I was like, eh, maybe. Cool and Z did farm. But I guess all the wins are from Cool and Z and Prosper, because I don't think very many Vivians won in NA. And they were picked more in NA because we have way more comp so I, I guess can that makes specify sense. NA. So in NA for Vivian, she went 5 and 10. Yeah. So 13. So that means the other regions actually did worse with Vivian. Because really? that means that the other two regions combined were 5 and 13. Huh. That is weird. Although, yep. is it weird? I don't know. I, I feel like when you give Vivian to Pickle Pepper, they just say, here you go. Shoot. There's the Inara. Keep shooting. Wait, was Tyra on the list? Uh, Tyra has a 50% win rate. 6 and 6. Mm. Okay. Fair enough. I, have, I mean, I have all the win rates here. I think biggest surprise is bottom 2 with 
So our bottom three with ten games played: Koga, Vivian, Corvus. Corvus. Koga was two and eight. Oof. Uh, that's that's Ratatouille's yeah. fault. That's Ratatouille. <laughs> Damn it, Ratatouille. Corvus, though. Yeah. And the two wins were against me. Man. I'm pissed. Wait, so... And uh, yeah, Vivian ten and twenty three. Corvus twelve and twenty seven. What's what's Ouch. the general swing rate look like? Is like if is it like a 40, 15, oh, 16. okay. Basically, basically fifty fifty. To be fair, most of the teams that won were winning with Rover and Genos, so I'm not like too yeah. surprised. I was gonna say mostly Grover, because like I don't know, Grover's just good. Grover, well, I mean, Grover was top five for the for the for the numbers there. Grover's yep. insane. So I think this was a pretty pretty good first episode. This is pretty productive. Very cool. Bit of scuffed technical difficulties on my end, but it's all good. We got it figured out <laughs> somewhat. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's 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 the first one. There's gonna be some uh, some bumps in the road, but yeah. this went well. We can keep it going. I, I started the stream with water noise, and there's no more water noise. So <laughs> progress. Yeah. All drained out. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for for joining me. I'm glad we could. Uh, Gather today, two days after Christmas, and come together. Man, what's the next episode about PWC? Yeah, I yeah, think we'll so. Yeah, more, I guess. yeah. I think I think that's where that's the logical uh, actually logical wait, progression. I think there might be announcements before the next episode. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, if I when is the high risk? No, never mind. It's no? happening the next week after. Oh. Nope. The no, the high risk presents is oh, January right. seventh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll be the, we're going to the same place, same time. It'll be the third. So we will uh, we will have stuff to talk about then. That's good for sure. I like stuff to talk about. I really hope they just stop delaying it and get it done because they have a, a schedule. I know. What do you mean they're delaying? Uh, <laughs> it was earlier last year. That's all. Yeah, I'm uh I'm hoping for some good news because I want to keep running my tournament too. But yeah, thank you all for joining us. Um. We will see you next week, hopefully. And this will also get put up on YouTube. So yep. people watching this on YouTube, thank you for joining us. Have a good one. Bye-bye.